She wants to break up with me? What is this? I would like to have a contingency out plan so that neither one of us feel like we're trapped in the relationship. Whether we are romantically involved or not, I want the very best for you. I wasn't coming at our relationship like it was a business, but in some ways I had the same fears. Love is a choice. And the problem is these days that most people are not choosing it. Escape, codependency, I'm trapped. Instead, it lightened it up to where I choose you every single day. What would you say if I told you the best way to have a sustaining long-term relationship is to have a breakup plan? Now, I know it seems counterintuitive, but that's what Austin and I would like to talk with you about today because that's how we started when we entered our romantic partnership. And it seemed a little bit odd to even Austin at the time, especially when I approached him with it. And it made him take a step back, and he's going to talk to you about that too. But honestly, after going through so many relationships, I wanted to know that there was safety, even if we decided that it was not the right fit for us later on down the road. And it took away fear. So we're going to dive in and we're going to talk about how having a contingency out plan actually helped us build a much stronger relationship. I'm really glad that you're willing to open this chapter of our connection because it is a little bit different. And anytime we've shared it with individuals, they don't know at first how that could even be possible. So how did, what was the first thing that was in your brain when I said, okay, let's do this romantic partnership thing, but maybe... But maybe I would like to have a contingency out plan so that neither one of us feel like we're trapped in the relationship. Yes. Unfortunately, I was at a time in my life where I didn't hear a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> All I heard is you want it out. That's what it, that's how it triggered in my mind. Wait a you know, second. I'm like, Wait, she wants to break up with me? What is this? Um, and so clearly that wasn't what you said. So I had to pull back that egoic fear and not let that take over and then allow, not let that, you know, put words in your mouth, which is not at all what you were saying. It's the same reason why, you know, in, it's a very common business practice to have a contingency plan, to have an out clause, right? Yes. And oftentimes the reason why that's in, it's not to screw the other person over in business. Now, maybe it is in some situations, but I would offer that uh, it's in there as a way to create a, a just-in-case plan, right? A safety plan, a backup plan. Like, hey, if for some reason you know, we have all the best intentions right now, we want this to succeed, we want this to be as best as it could be, but if something happens, like we want to be able to amicably depart so that it's in the best of all across the board. Whether we succeed or don't succeed together, it's still a success. Right. Yes. And so when, you know, I was able to calm back down and, and get my, <laughs> get my stuff together and be like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, this is where uh, it's coming from. It's coming from the fact that she deeply desires a connected relationship with me. And because of this, this is why this is being brought forward. That opened the door. Yes. And Having been in the business world, I understood in partnerships in business, you always have that agreement, right? Should we sell the business? This is what it will look like. This is how we dissolve the business should the business not move forward. And it didn't matter how large or small the business was. There was always this agreement for what it would look like in different circumstances if the entire entity were to shut down or be sold off or what have you. Now, I wasn't coming at our relationship like it was a business, but in some ways, I had the same fears, right? What would happen if the relationship dissolved? 
And I didn't desire us to move forward with that fear looming over our heads. And if it worked in business where I entered into a business agreement with someone and to get that fear off the table and not have it hanging out, we just created this plan for what would happen. And then you know what? (sighs) We all felt better. We didn't worry anymore about what might happen. Instead, we could focus on what was happening in the moment and how we could build toward the most successful future possible. And if that could work in those circumstances where it was all business, why in the world wouldn't it work if we love each other to the depth that we love each other and then we could just take that completely off the table and not fear wait a second, am I trapped now? And there's this codependency where I cannot escape, right? There are these words that start coming up, right? Escape, codependency, I'm trapped. Instead, it lightened it up to where I choose you every single day because I have none of that. I know If at any point I choose or you choose to go in a different direction, that we know how that could occur and would occur. And so when we choose each other every day, it makes it so special. And that's so different because that takes us on this depth and exploration of love that wouldn't be possible if it was because I need you, either financially or for some other reasons other than the depth of our love. Now, that's not saying that we don't share. We cohabitate. We do all of these things. But again, it isn't because we are bound in some way that we can't unwind. We know how we would do that. And we made it easy. That was the best part. This shouldn't be complicated. This shouldn't be a fight. It shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be negative. I mean, that's not, that's not the point. We're going into this positively. Our desire is to create a lifelong positive relationship. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the idea of this, of just creating intention that aligns with the type of love that we desire to experience in our relationship. You know, if we, like you were saying, those other, those words of, of trapped um, or codependency, I mean, those are, those are tough words that people deal with all the time, but there's also have to, there's mm-hmm. also, you know, bound, there's, um, you know, the need, like you're saying need, um, like it's, expectation, right? There's all these other words that are, I feel soul crushing in a lot of ways. They feel confining, not expansive. Love is expansive. And so when we created this approach and you helped me realize like, Hey, this is, I love you. And so whether we are romantically involved or not, I want the very best for you. Like, yeah, I couldn't argue with that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's exactly what I would want a partner to hear. And that's exactly what is, I desire for you. So for us to strategically create that in motion, like that, all that does is then allow the intention as you're talking about everything that we do from there on is not from a place of fear. Oh, is she going to leave me? You know, or is she going to be thinking I'm going to leave her? You know, is one little action that I do here going to be immediately thought because you know, because I'm leaving her. Instead, it creates opportunity and space for seeking to understand versus jumping to conclusion. It's, it's, it's amazing what just one thing from the very beginning can do to set up the experience of the rest of your life together. Yes. And again, like in business, you know, it creates that trust, right? Because you are coming to the table talking about, well, if this happens, then this is what we will do. You get to know a lot about one another in that scenario. It's the same in your relationship. When you come together, and it doesn't matter what phase of your relationship you're in, right? If your romantic partnership you're in, 
if you come together and you say, look, I desire us to create this plan so that we have an awareness and we do it in love, then you start talking through the strategy that you would execute. You learn about yourself and you learn about your connection and you learn about your partner through the entire process. You also realize what's truly important to you. And generally it's not stuff. Like that's the first question we get asked a lot of times is, okay, so who gets the stuff? And stuff was not really what was on our, our souls, mm-hmm. right? It was how do we maintain the friendship connection? Should the romantic connection mm-hmm. no longer align for us? Mm-hmm. Stuff can be replaced for the most part. The friendship that we have is irreplaceable. So how do we make certain that that friendship is nurtured along the pathway to the disconnection of any romantic alignment that we have? And so we talked about how that could occur so that, of course, we're both human, right? Egos are going to arise. What would it be like the first time I saw you with someone or the first time you saw me with someone? How could we handle that in the most delicate way so that it wasn't painful for the other person, right? And not that we ever plan for that to happen. That is not what we're actively choosing now. But for me to know that you love me enough that you wouldn't just break up with me today and then tomorrow bring another person right in front of me, that made me know that you understand how deep our connection is. The other thing we get, though, is individuals say, oh, it's easy for you to say now, but what really happens should you ever disconnect? The thing is, you're right. Those people are right. We don't know. We hope to never, never, ever find out. But we have an agreement in this moment for what it will be. And I do trust that that agreement will hold. Because I believe in us, and I believe in our connection, and I believe in our friendship. And that strengthens us. I agree. It's respect, right? And our, our respect transcends one situation. And that's, and I think that's, that's, part of, that's part of maybe the disconnect for a lot of individuals is they're viewing whatever romantic relationship that they're currently in as the end all be all. I'm, you know, for me, my belief, my feeling is that I've known you before this life and I'm going to know you after this life. And there is a deep soul connection that I just can't express in any other way to anyone. I can't go and explain it, but it's something I know deep in my heart. And I know it's something you know deep in in your heart. And so it's not about a need to explain to anyone else because our relationship is our relationship as it's not inclusive of anyone else in that sense, right? Um, And so as long as we know that and we see that and we embody that, then the idea of hurting the other person just doesn't even make sense. It just falls away. And I've never had that before prior to you. I... I desired to respect people, but my problem was is that it was limited because I, I didn't respect myself fully. Like I was talking about in the last podcast, right? I was saying I, I could only be as honest or transparent as I was with, you know, to others as I was with myself. And there was a, lot, a strong limitation there because I was attempting to create a facade around me just to make me feel good, you know, while unintentionally hurting others. And until I was able to break that down and push forward, and recognize the true authenticity within myself and then build from there, then that opened the gateway, that opened the door for me to be the most loving version of myself and to recognize 
the truth in a relationship that I feel again transcends this lifetime. And so, and it's not because, oh my gosh, I'm trapped with her before, I'm trapped with her after. And, oh my gosh, know, I, find I find you. you. <laughs> It's one of our little things that yeah. we say. <laughs> Wherever you go, oh, I find you. <laughs> um, it, it's it's no, I get like I get to spend life with you in so many different ways. Like I get to, I choose to. You know, um, I was listening to this podcast by uh, Justin Baldoni the other day, and he was bringing forward that love is a choice. And the problem is these days is that most people are not choosing it. And, and that just really resonated with me because that's a lot of what we talk about, how love is a choice. And so what we did is we created a relationship that was set up in a way that allows our choice of love to be expansive, to be connected, to be the very source of the joy and the connection that we have. That's rare, that's special, and I desire to protect that at all you know, across the board. That's something I desire to spend the rest of my life engaging in. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. I agree, but that statement breaks my heart. Not from anything you just said, just to say that most people aren't choosing love. To me, I don't know that most people have been given the opportunity to understand how to choose love. Mm -hmm. We have been fed fear for so long. We have been fed guilt. We have been fed shame. We even market it, mm -hmm. right? You're not good enough, so you need this product. Fear this, and then take this so that you're better. And I don't mean it as a slam. It's just our reality. And when you've had years and years and decades and of that being what you're surrounded by, it's hard to know that you have the option to choose love. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a very fair statement. And I pulled that quote from Justin like out of context and it was around, how, you know, why do people break up? And it's because they just, they stop choosing it. And instead of, because you know, they feel these things that we were talking about, they feel trapped. They feel expect there's expectations around it so they don't feel the freedom to choose and i think that's what you're saying and i just want to like pull that together uh in terms of the relevancy to it um thank you for clarifying yeah. but i do think it all goes hand in hand and that's why we're seeing younger individuals struggling to make romantic connections we're seeing marriages fail even and friendships. Even friendships. Like, friendships hard. are down. Uh, I mean, the the average male right now uh, over thirty has one friend, like one close friend, and that yeah. was a statistic that blew my mind. You know, just a few years ago, I think it was like three to five or something like that. So the fact that that many, you know, men are struggling to connect in that way, and I'm sure it is for women. I just didn't see the statistic for women, so it's uh, it's not that it's above or below in any way. I, I don't know. But that just really hit me hard when I see some of the some guys that you know I'm connecting with or, or getting closer with. It's just a thought that I have in my head. Um, how many others are, are out there that I, I are just seeking that to connect and just haven't been able to? Yes, and it's challenging. Because again, if we know how to, if we're free to express, this is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of losing what I just gained, right? Because everything seems so transient right now in the world. Then we can get it out on the table 
And we don't feel trapped by it, as we've said. We don't feel as though there's no room to move within it, to change within it, right? As we talked about in our last podcast, the opportunity to grow and change and explore who we are, that freedom, and know that the fear of loss has already been dealt with up front in some ways. We front loaded it. <laughs> so now we can choose that love, that connection without thinking, oh my gosh, what do I do if something were to happen? Mm-hmm. That's gone. Mm-hmm. It's easier to navigate, even in friendships, right? If I start to become close to a friend and the whole time I'm thinking in the back of my mind, oh my gosh, they're going to stop being my friend at some point because they're going to judge me. They're going to evaluate me. They're going to learn that I have this going on in my life. Then I'm going to withdraw and I'm going to put up a guard. So isn't it better to just put it out on the table in advance and say, hey, look, this is what I have going on in my life. And I would like to know up front, does this resonate with you or does it not? Mm-hmm. Not to put somebody on the spot, but at least if you're both being completely transparent with each other, you get the opportunity to get the fear off the table. Mm-hmm. So that then you can bond and connect. Now, I'm not saying in the first two or three days of being friends, you should say, here's my laundry list of stuff. Do you want to be friends? (laughs) (laughs) Like that also has its own little side. But maybe within the first few months of being friends so that you're not just sitting there Mm -hmm. wondering and waiting for them to walk away because oftentimes that is what happens. They're going to learn this, and then they're going to leave. And then you end up driving them away, even though they probably wouldn't have left once they learned it. So why not have that conversation? And we have so many podcasts on communication, effective communication. We have free courses out on our Suivera Facebook group on communication. So definitely worth going out. And looking into that. Absolutely. What I love about what you're bringing forward is also um, it's important for people to realize like when we say if we were to separate or no longer be involved uh, romantically, it's, it's, it's not that we wouldn't be devastated. It's not that we wouldn't have any feelings. And I think that's one of the other things that people, you know, ask uh, in this regard. It's, you know, we're not, we're not robots, you know, we, we do have feelings uh, and it would be difficult. You know, we both talked about that. We've even felt it together, you know, what it would be like. And we're like, no, we don't want that. And oftentimes we'll just kind of check in and just throughout the year, you know, we're coming up on 10 years together here, right? And we'll, we'll continue to check in, you know, not, it's not like every minute of every day by any means, but we'll we'll have discussions where we do say, Hey, you know, like I'm feeling really good about this. Like I just want to make sure we're on the same page and you're feeling really good. Are we still in that flow where, you know, we're continuing to choose each other and you feel free and, you know, uh, I feel free. Like, you know, is this, are we in alignment with what we said in from the very beginning of our relationship? And when we both say yes, it just, again, allows us to just be back into that space. Um, but I'm bringing up this feeling point because, yeah, it's we still would have a feeling around it. I mean, we still it would be uh, devastating. It would hurt. It would be not enjoyable. Like it is, it is fun being together. But I, I, the reason why I wanted to really state this is that because of the because la- we're no longer in that codependency aspect we're not in the trapped or the expectation or any of that fear aspect that choice of loving each other does come from such 
pure, authentic joy and, and connection and excitement and it just allows us to be, then there isn't, and it wasn't, it isn't like, we can still hold the space of feeling devastated afterwards, but also be very joyous for the in, grat- in a space of gratitude for what occurred. And I think that's, that's it. And so we are in gratitude together in the relationship, but we've also said, okay, if something, something happens, then we're also gonna be really grateful for the time that we had together in this experience. And then that will op- create another opportunity for, for us to be in gratitude from a friendship or however it is next, you know, and that's, that to me is so special because again, it it doesn't, it doesn't mean we slide back into fear because all of a sudden we feel devastated. It gives us the space to have a feeling, to feel that emotion, but also give us a place to return to gratitude because that's where we shine. Yes. And for me, I can honestly say In my past, I always desired that security that the person I was with was never going to leave. But the reality is no one can give us that. Mm -hmm. No one. We do the best we can in the moments we're together. And we learn from each other and we love each other and we grow together. But if we spend those moments afraid of what could happen, then we miss the opportunities to love each other, learn from each other, and grow together. And I didn't want to ever do that again, Mm -hmm. ever. I desired to soak in every ounce of love. I desire to soak in every ounce of learning about myself and learning about us together and really connect in the present moments. And if instead I was so scared and somehow I needed some guarantee from you that you honestly can't give me because none of us know what might happen even tomorrow. Death could take you. Any number of things could take you. So how can you guarantee me that you'll be with me? I know our souls are bound, but in physical form, there is no true guarantee. And so if I waste our time together, and I do mean waste our time together by wishing for something that actually can't be given to me, then I'm going to miss the time that I am getting. And I never want to do that again to myself. So yes, this is somewhat selfish, but I don't want to do that to you either. And so that is where, when we came to the table with this and I was expressing, it came from that true soul desire to say, let's be with each other in love and in connection every moment and do our best Because you're right, again, we are human and we feel. Fear and ego will come up from time to time. But this tool allows us to put it back in its place when it does. Yeah. It allows us to talk about it. So when these things come up, if we do have moments, it's not like we haven't had moments of fear in the last 10 years. You know, if something occurred and it's like, oh oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm having this feeling. You know, I don't, I know it's not in alignment with what we talked about, but I'm still having it. And then we just talk through it. And most of the time it's either a misunderstanding or it's just, uh, maybe it's nothing that you did. It's just a feeling I'm having that I, I just should be allowed to have and share it with you. And, and then it just brings us closer together or vice versa. You know, it's just, it, there, are, there are some social conditionings that it's, it's hard to just release, right? Yes. Yes, yes, you know, yes. I mean, even just the idea, like a lot of this, another word is ownership, like this idea of that we own the other person or that we love ourselves through the other person, which almost kind of can feel like ownership in a way too, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's all these different expressions of, of love that, that 
are fear-based instead of true love-based. And so I think through through this process or through this, it's helped me realize that love isn't a result, it's a process. And then I can choose what to bring into that process. Do I want to bring fear into that process? Is that going to bring the best out of the love that we have? Absolutely not. Do I want to, do I want to bring the most joyous, connected, and abundant love into this process? Yeah, that's going to pull the best out of us. And so that's what I keep seeking to bring forward. That's what you keep seeking to bring forward. And we do this because we have the freedom and the expansion to do it. That's why this tool is so incredible. Yes, I agree. So as crazy as it may sound, having a plan for how things may separate can actually be an amazing, amazing tool. If you have done something like this and you want to share it with us, we would love to hear about it. So drop us a line wherever you're listening or send us a message to info at suivera.org. We would love to hear all about it and share it with our community. And if you're looking for other amazing tools and tips like this, we've got a bunch of them out here on the Heart Leader Podcast. So check out some of our other playlists. 